Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to look at the latest update to the G1000 NXI mod by the working title team. It's now in version 0.8.0, and this update is coming out at the same time as sim update number 6. As always, if you have the mod, remember to update it by going to your content manager, and if you don't have it yet, you can find it for free in the built-in marketplace. First, let's take a look at the new map auto pan and auto zoom feature. So first, we just need to open our flight plan window. We do that by pressing the FPL button over here on the MFD. And then we need to enable the cursor. If you're using the new lock style controls on PC, you do this by holding the left mouse button first and then right clicking. So that'll push the center of the FMS knob in to activate the cursor. So here we have the zoomer waypoint selected and it's already auto panned and auto zoomed the map for me to that waypoint. If I use the outer FMS knob to select different waypoints, you can see that for each one, it'll automatically pan and zoom the map to show that waypoint. So this makes it really convenient to review your entire flight plan. Another new feature when selecting waypoints is that if you happen to choose an airport, you'll actually be able to see the current METAR or the weather report for that selected airport. So here I'm going to re-enable the cursor, but this time I'm going to scroll down and select my destination airport, which is Kilo Golf Echo Golf. This is a Spokane airport in Washington. And as soon as I select it down here, you can see the current METAR. So I can pick out key information I'm looking for, such as the wind, which is 130 at 3 knots, or the altimeter, which is 299 or 2. Next, we can now manually pan the maps on both the MFD and the PFD. We do this just by pushing the range knob, and that'll activate a little cursor in the middle of the map. Now all we have to do to move that cursor is to hold our left mouse button down on the range knob, and then move our mouse. So as I move my mouse to the right, when it hits the edge of the map, it'll pan it in that direction. And we'll also get some convenient information based on where the cursor is. So it'll show us our distance and bearing from our current location to wherever we put the cursor, as well as the latitude and longitude of that point. Once you're done using the cursor, you can return the map to its normal state just by pushing the range knob in again. This new panning feature also works over on the PFD if you use the inset map. You can turn the inset map on by clicking the map slash HSI button on the bottom, then clicking on layout, and then finally clicking on inset map. Then once you have it on, the range knob works the same way. You can just push the range knob to activate the cursor, and then once the cursor is activated, you can just push the range knob in a direction to move it and to pan the map to see the area you're interested in. Now, if your controls work differently, it's probably because I'm using the lock interaction style. And if you want to use this style of controls, you'll need to go into your options menu and then go under general options. And then from here, click on accessibility on the left. And then in the middle here, you can find this line that says cockpit interaction system and use the blue arrows here to change it from legacy to lock. And I also recommend turning off the two tooltip options here if you don't need them because they're pretty large. Next up, we have a major update to the different types of RNAV approaches that can be flown. Previously, before Sim Update 6, every RNAV approach was treated like an LPV approach. That means localizer performance with vertical guidance. It's basically like an ILS, but it's the GPS or WAS equivalent of that. You can see here when I'm selecting the approach type, it shows the specific RNAV approach here that it is. This is an LPV. Here's another example showing an LNAV plus V approach, which is lateral navigation with advisory vertical guidance. And here's another for Telluride that is a localizer performance approach, also with advisory vertical guidance. Check out my video linked in the corner and in the description if you want to learn the basics of RNAV and how to fly the LPV approach. Next up, let's go back over to the PFD and look at what's called the Flight Path Marker, or FPM. The Flight Path Marker is this green crosshair looking symbol right here, kind of to the left a little bit. And what this is, is basically a projection of where the aircraft is heading. During this flight, you can see I have a pretty strong tailwind here, 25 knots, and it's pushing us a little bit to the left as well. And that's why the FPM is offset to the left, because that's actually the direction that the plane is traveling through the air. The autopilot has us aimed a little bit to the right to compensate for the wind and to keep us on course. 
If we had no wind, then the flight path marker would be in the middle horizontally. We're also not climbing nor descending right now, so the flight path marker is level in the middle at the zero pitch mark. Here, later on during my landing, you can see that the marker is now down below that zero pitch line. And in this case, it's actually also helping me to line up with the runway because there was a crosswind pushing me to the left a bit. So if I look at the marker, I can see if I'm lined up and compensating for the wind correctly or not. Speaking of the zero pitch line or the ZPL, there are also now compass headings that are turned on by default on the zero pitch line. So this white line right here is the zero pitch line. And as you can see, there are now heading numbers along that. So here's the 360 heading. And if you want to turn those numbers off, you can by going to the PFD options soft button, then click on SVT, and then the heading label soft key right here will toggle them on or off. Last but obviously not least, we now have the entire MIST approach procedures as part of our approach procedures when we load them in. So here I'm choosing an LPV approach and my transition waypoint. And here you can see that after the MIST approach point, this used to be the last point we got in our approach, but now we have additional steps afterwards for the MIST approach procedure, including the MIST approach holding point and the hold itself. When you decide to execute the MIST approach procedure, you can either hit the suspend soft key at the bottom or use the activate MIST approach option on the procedure menu. So here I've just clicked on the suspend soft key and that'll take it out of suspend mode and automatically sequence us to the next waypoint, which will be part of our MIST approach procedure. After that, I use the ATC menu to report my MIST approach and let them know that I would be flying the published MIST approach procedure. I then just re-enabled my autopilot to fly me to the missed approach hold point and fly the hold for me while I contacted ATC again to get permission to fly the approach a second time. All right, that does it for version 080. And as always, I've linked the full release notes in the video description below. So go ahead and check that out if you wanna see even more improvements and bug fixes that were made for this version. As always, leave any questions, comments, and suggestions below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.